Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spudknocker, as always. And today we've got an awesome new capability to show off in the F-A-18C Hornet, and that is the addition of the Joint Helen Mounted Queuing System, or JBAX, or JHICMIS, however you want to pronounce it. All are equally valid. And it is a game changer for Western aircraft. Now we've already had helmet mounted displays, or helmet mounted sights, for the Eastern Bloc aircraft, the, namely the MiG-29 and Su-27 in the form of the R-73 missile, and in reality, the West was rather late to the party in terms of fielding helmet-mounted sights and displays. Uh, the Russians did it, sorry, the Soviets did it first, then the South Africans, and the Israelis. Now, our joint helmet-mounted queuing system, used by many Western countries, as well as the U.S., of course, um, is actually a derivative of the Israeli Elbit Systems Dash 3 helmet mounted display. Now the main difference between the two is the joint helmet mounted queuing system is a completely modular and bolt-on approach, whereas the Dash 3 is a whole integrated helmet. So that's why the Dash 3 tends to look a little bit smaller, it's not as much bulbousness in front of the pilot's eyes, is because a lot of the electronics are actually integrated into the shell of the helmet, whereas the joint helmet mounted queuing system is simply a bolt-on onto the front of existing U.S. Navy, Marine Corps, and Air Force, as well as allied partner nations, uh, stocks of HGU-style flight crew helmets. It's head tracking. It follows you around the aircraft via electromagnetic fields in the, air, in the aircraft, and we can see one of the largest ones in this, sorry, one of the largest sensors in this shot now. And that is to the right of the pilot's head. That little thing sticking up out of the canopy is a electromagnetic sensor that helps track the position of the pilot's head in relation to the symbology displayed on the pilot's helmet. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and hop into first person mode and hop out of this beautiful GoPro mode. I'm definitely going to be using this a lot now that I've figured out a really good and easy way to get into this really cool view. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and hop on in. So here we are in first person mode. We'll go ahead and push our radar out a bit. We should have a couple uh, MiG-29s out here. They are unarmed and they're just gonna be props for us to shoot at uh, for this tutorial. First thing you wanna do, turn on your HMD here. This is an on off switch as well as a brightness. Very important for low light conditions. And as you can see, when you're looking straight up, straight up at the HUD, you're going to have it blinked. This is called blink, and that's because it would be really annoying to have all that symbology duplicated while you're looking at the HUD, right? Not very useful. So we'll go ahead and hopefully lock up these MiGs. There they are. We'll go ahead and lock them up, help, us, help guide us to them, and then we'll drop the lock and we'll engage using our helmet mounted sight as well as the A-mine X's. So as you can see, we have a little crosshair that shows exactly where we're looking. We also have a heading tape up there as well as a degrees. Now the degrees are gonna be very, very cool as well as the heading tape because if we see traffic or maybe a bogey or even a bandit out there and we need to tell our wingmen exactly where to look if we're flying in formation, we could say uh, 14 degrees high at 280 degrees super quickly, then they can use their JMAX, look right in that same piece of sky, and hopefully find that bandit as quickly as possible. So I'll go ahead and bring this guy out of autopilot, and we'll go ahead and speed on up and catch up to these MiGs. And while we do that, we'll go ahead and select our AIM-9Xs, and we can see it looks very similar to the helmet-mounted sight of the MiG-29 and Su-27 in terms of the circle showing where the sensor of the missile is pointing. Now we can acquire and lock onto a target up to 80 degrees off our shoulder. And the AIM-9X has been tested 
to fire up to 90 degrees off. However, you can't acquire a target from that uh, angle. I can just barely see them visually, but we'll go ahead and turn on the labels uh, just to make it a little bit easier for us in this demonstration. As you can see, when we look at the HUD, our sensor snaps right back to bore sight. So we'll go ahead and start chasing down these MIGs. Now, if you want to lock onto a target, you simply put that circle over the enemy aircraft and press the cage uncage button, and that'll lock right up for you. Same way it would if you're doing bore sight, just it would simply be out here, or over here, or any number of infinite um, places in space and time you could put your head. Now these MiGs seem to be going faster than I remember putting them in the mission editor, but that's okay. Now after we down these MiGs, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a few different options that we can select on the helmet mounted, mounted display DDI page. This includes different reject settings, so if you don't like some of the symbology, you can get rid of it, as well as some options with the blink feature as well. So we've got a visual on two of our MIGs here. I'm not going to do any bore sight work. You guys know how to engage with sidewinders and bore sight. I know that already. So we'll go ahead and drop our lock here. And we'll go ahead and go after this guy first. We've got a lock on. You can see we're way off bore sight now. And we'll go ahead and fire a missile. That's the leader. He's popping flares. Did we get him? We got him. And so we'll go even farther off bore sight for the second guy. Box one again. Wow, look at that guy go. And splash two. That's two quick kills, right in succession, both very high off bore sight. And we'll go ahead and go on back to navigation mode. I don't see the wreckage anymore, but we're not in danger of running into it. All right, guys, now that we've got those two MiGs safely splashed and we've got no other threats out here, we can go ahead and take a look at, at the HMD DDI page and how you can set up your rejects as well as the blink settings. So we'll go ahead and go back over to our support page. We'll go to the HMD page. And the first thing we'll talk about is blink. Now blink is, like I've explained before, that blinking of the HMD when we look at the HUD. It'd be quite annoying to have all of this information displayed twice in front of you, right? But you can turn that off. So we can unbox that guy, blink. And now it does not blink. Obviously that's very annoying, but why would you potentially want this? Well, say your HUD breaks, whether it's battle damage or your jet just broke. Um, maybe something went wrong in a cat stroke or hard landing and you had to take off again or you know, whatever it was, your jet broke and now you don't have a HUD. Well, you have a replacement HUD. I don't particularly like flying with this guy up here. It actually gave me a little bit of a headache and I'm unsure as to why that would be. But uh, we've got a healthy jet, so we'll go ahead and turn our HUD back on. And we'll turn our blink back on. And say all this information here, you don't like having it. You want something a little bit more Spartan. You want something that looks nominally like the Su-27 or the MiG-29's um, HMD, where it's, there's almost no information, just a circle. Well, you can go into a reject mode, just like you can on the HUD. So we'll go ahead and hit reject one. And you can see we still have a altitude and airspeed readout as well as an alpha. And there's two reject modes. There's reject one and reject two. Now, right now they're set up for the same thing. But if we go in, go ahead and set that back to norm. But if we go into reject setup, we can change which pieces of symbology 
um, are displayed on which settings. Whether it's on, regular, norm mode, level 1, or level 2. So we'll go ahead and create a super duper Spartan um, symbology layout, just like say your MiG-29 or your Su-27. So we'll go ahead and go down here. Um, altitude, we'll set that to level 1. Airspeed, level 1. Alpha, don't need that, level 1. Level 1, level 1, level 1, level 1. So now we've basically gotten rid of all of that symbology, and that's okay, this is just a demonstration here. So we'll go ahead and hit return, and we'll go over to reject 1, and we can see now it's very, very Spartan. We don't have any of the symbology that we had before. Very Spartan like your MiG-29 or your Su-27 HMD. But I'm not a huge fan of that. The whole reason for having this is I can look over my shoulder and still see my altitude and airspeed, which is super nice in a dogfight, that's for sure. So we'll go ahead and go on back to Norm. Now, in the future, we're going to have some other really cool options that are come with the uh, joint helmet mounted queuing system. And I think the one that I'm most excited for is being able to queue a target on the ground just by looking at it. So. If you know, if you're experienced with the AV-8B Harrier or the A-10 Warthog, you'll know that you'd have to point your VSI at the ground at some point, then move your TDC in order to lock that targeting pod on that point on the ground. Now, this is kind of annoying in some places, especially if you're flying directly at a defended target, you may get a little bit too close to it, or it's just simply annoying to have to put your nose down uh, you lose your altitude, maybe gain too much airspeed, something like that. But with the joint helmet mounted queuing system, you simply look at your target, it could be anywhere really, and then queue that target, and your targeting pod and your weapons will be slaved to that point. Now, uh, in US doctrine, as well as other countries' doctrine, you cannot simply queue a target with the helmet mounting sight on the ground and then drop bombs on it. It's not precise enough. The chance of collateral damage, hitting the wrong target, especially in a highly populated area or in a danger close situation with troops on the ground, you are very likely to miss your intended target because it's just simply you can't get as fine of a lock on doing this. So what you do is you lock a target and then sweeten up that picture in your targeting pod with your TDC. It just makes it's a two-step process but it makes it a lot easier than say simply having to point the nose of the jet at that target or slew the target pod to a waypoint. So I hope you guys liked this video. I kind of thought it was cool to kind of put that uh, kind of GoPro-ish view into the cockpit. And I think this is a good video to show that off with. And because I know people are definitely gonna ask and definitely be curious about this, the HMD does definitely work on night vision mode. So you will be able to shoot high off foresight missiles at night. In real life, the joint helmet mounted queuing system is compatible with night vision goggles, which is pretty darn cool, if you ask me. So we'll go ahead and take her out autopilot, and we'll engage those MiGs again, but this time at night. By the way, I'm really enjoying these dot labels. They definitely help. And they look a heck of a lot better than the old labels. So we'll fire a missile. Ooh, that was bright in our goggles. And we'll try and go for a little bit of a higher off board site with this one. That should be good. And there goes our second super bright missile. And splash two. So, as you can see, joint helmet mounted queuing system definitely works at night, definitely works during the day. And now you know how to set up the reject, use it, use it at night, use it in the daytime and many other situations. So, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. And, as always, fly safe, guys, and enjoy this awesome new capability.